So a fresh server's round the corner, I thought I'd make a cheeky little dungeon levelling guide from level 15 all the way up until level 70. For those people who want to go a little sweaty and just grind dungeons all the way up until max level with their friends on Discord. Now dungeon grinding will take over typical questing when you have a very good AOE group, or honestly, probably takes over if you just have good players and you can do big pulls. This is much easier in Wrath of the Lich King considering that your characters are more powerful, Plus, obviously when a first server is launched, it's going to be absolutely packed with players. Layering and dynamic respawns will make it playable, but it's still very likely to be slower than dungeon levelling, simply by the fact it's going to be slower for you to complete your quests. By the way guys, apparently 80% of the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel, so make sure you are subscribed. You may think you are subscribed, but you're probably not, because videos can appear in your feed even though you're not subscribed. Plus YouTube likes to unsubscribe people for some reason. If you do subscribe and go to my channel subscriber trailer, in the description of that video there is a big weapon progression guide for people playing on fresh servers and it will cover everything like caster weapons, warrior weapons, range weapons and even shields. So my first tip is obviously do the dungeon quests when you can do them. Get the add-on Atlas quest to make it easier to find the quest starting locations. This add-on is just great, it shows you all the quests for the dungeon, it will give you the locations, coordinates, and even show you where certain quest chains start to eventually unlock a quest for that dungeon. I will also show all the quest starting locations in the video, and the level requirements for all the quests for every single dungeon. Now, if you're looking to optimize, I'd recommend getting different members of your party to kind of spread out and pick up different quests and then get summoned back to the dungeon location. Here's a classic example. If you're wanting to do Rage Fire Chasm, Get someone to go to Thunderbluff to pick up the two quests from there, and then get one person to go to Undercity, and then summon them back. The second big tip is obviously you've got to get a really good comp. But remember guys, you want to pick for solid guys who are actually going to be consistent, and who you can stand to be around with for hours and hours on Discord, over picking the best class. Now when it comes to picking DPS, the first best is definitely AoE DPS like the mage. They're so good low level as well, they can start AoE at level 14, but obviously they rely heavily on mana whereas other classes don't. Shaman is also a good option, probably the second best AoE DPS because of Flame Nova, Magma Totem and Chain Lightning. And obviously they bring great utility. Your second best option is to go for really good cleave DPS and multi-dot DPS, although multi dot DPS are more the third best. So, you know, your cleave DPS is going to be your warrior and your rep paladin, and by extent the hunter, but I don't think the hunter is as good as the warrior or the rep paladin. And then you've got your multi-dot classes like Shadow Priest, Warlock. Now, these classes will kill them up slower than a mage, but they have much less mana issues, and obviously the warrior has absolutely no mana issues because they don't have mana. But the warrior really needs to be high level before they start to unlock their juicy cleave abilities. Same goes for the rep paladin to be honest, but remember the rep paladin and the warrior will be extremely good when they unlock the ravager weapon from Herod in Scala Monastery. Having low level warriors talent straight away into Thunderclap isn't such a bad idea to be honest, then respect later into arms for sweeping strikes, and then obviously at level 60 in the arm spec you get the juicy bladestorm. Paladins at level 21 get Seal of Command, so they're probably the best cleaver low level, and they also get Consecration at that level. Seal of Command causes all of their melee attacks and single target abilities to cleave for holy damage. And obviously later they get the good stuff like Divine Storm and Holy Wrath. Hunters have their multi shot at level 18, and they can multi dot with their Serpent Sting and Explosive Trap at level 34, and Volley at level 40, and that's when Hunters become quite good actually, to be fair, I think they're a little bit slept on. Shadow Priest and Warlock can multi dot. And they're very mana efficient with life tap and spirit tap, but their AoE abilities, well, you know, Rain of Fire isn't that great, and they unlock their AoE abilities much later level, like Seed of Corruption and Mindseer. Although a Warlock with their Fell Guard to Cleave isn't too bad. Then you have the Rogue and the Thal Druid, and I think these are probably the worst options, to be honest. I am really sorry for saying it. But, you know, they're really good single target DPSs, but they don't really have as good cleave as the other classes. Rogue only has cooldown base cleave until they unlock Fan of Knives, and the Feral Druid is the same until they unlock Swipe. You can make the argument that Rogue are really good when they double up on Fiery Weapon, but that's going to be harder to get when you're levelling on a fresh server. However, the Boomkin can multi-dot Starfire, and then it will unlock Hurricane at level 40. 
And then obviously Starfall later at level 60, and then it become pretty good to be fair. So if I was leveling a druid at level 40, I'd be switching to Boomkin straight away, or just to go as leveling as a Boomkin. Now when it comes to tanks, I think all are pretty good. I think Warrior stands out a little bit more. They just do more damage than the other tanks lower level. With talents like Improve Thunderclap and Revenge, basically when they're like level 20, they're already pumping, whereas Prop Haldens, you have to wait until level 40 to get Holy Shield, 55 for Avenger Shield, plus no Consecration until level 20. The play for a Paladin is to actually tank with the Seal of Command talent, actually, to be honest, at level 21. Druid to get a decent AoE low level with Swipe at level 16, it's not too bad, you can definitely have a Druid as a tank. My personal advice is, if you're doing a group where you've got a Warrior and a Paladin, get your Warrior to tank low level content and then switch into a DPS at about level 40 when the Paladin gets more AoE abilities and can tank better. When it comes to healers, I definitely think Shaman and Paladins are the best for their buffs, then Priest and then Druid, but obviously if you already have a Paladin or a Shaman as a DPS in your group, then getting a Druid or a Priest is probably better. But this depends on the group composition, you know, let's say you have a melee heavy comp, they will only benefit from a Shaman's melee DPS increasing totems, not cast DPS totems, but still benefit from two Paladin buffs like Kings and Blessing of Might, but then if you have a Warrior in the group, you've got Battle Shout and then you don't really need the two Paladins because you've already got an attack power buff. So you've really got to think about how certain classes are going to complement each other when you're making group compositions for fresh servers. But normally, Shaman and Paladin just better as healers. Now I'll give you two examples of really sweaty comps that you can make. If you think you can like come up with an even sweatier, disgusting, overpowered comp, then do let me know in the comment section. Now, here's the caster group that I'd recommend, Tank, Mage, 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 and then Priest. The reason why a Priest is there rather than a Shaman or anything like that is because of Holy Nova. You can just get the Mages to do Blizzards, get the Priest to do Holy Novas, and the mobs will absolutely melt. The Tank really just becomes a Taunt Dummy with a Vigilant ability, causing it to be an infinite cooldown so they can just Taunt and help keep the Mages alive. You could even do it with four Mages, to be fair, because they are doing most of the work. And if you're going for a melee cleave comp, this is what I'd recommend, a Warrior Tank, two rep Paladins, Enhancement Shaman, and a Druid Healer. Now, you get the Warrior Tank because it's simply the best cleave DPS tank low level and for the most of a leveling journey. Ret is the same, they provide the best cleave DPS for the majority of the leveling journey. You know, Warrior is also good, but it just, they have to be higher level before they start getting good. And Shaman also provides great AoE and cleave DPS low level. And these are the buffs that you're getting. So the Enhancement Shaman gives Windfury Totem extra 4% haste when a spec deepened into Enhancement. The two Paladins there means you got Blessing of Might and you got Blessing of Kins. And it saves the Warrior from having to use Battle Shout. And then higher level at 68, even though you're pretty much at the end of the day, you can, I guess you can use Commanding Shout. And obviously the Druid Healer gives Mark of the Wild. The only thing missing here is a Stamina buff and you could swap out with a Priest Healer here, but the Priest Healer doesn't increase the DPS of the group unless I'm missing something, do let me know. But the Druid does, with Mark of the Wild increasing the strength of the other DPS in the group, and obviously the agility too. Now, for the dungeon route itself, I'm going to go through every single dungeon, you know, what's best to grind at what level, and we're also going to go through what quests that you can obtain, and the minimum level required to obtain all of the quests for that dungeon. So first of all, Rage Fire Chasm, obviously this is only for the Horde. You can start this at level 13 and you can get all the quests unlocked at level 9. You've got Slaying the Beast, Searching for the Lost Satchel, Testing an Enemy's Strength, The Power to Destroy, and then you've also got the Chain Quest called Hidden Enemies. Now for Dead Mines, this is level 16 to 23, it's Alliance only, you need to be level 16 to obtain all of the quests. So first of all, we've got Red Silk Bandanas, Collecting Memories, O oh Brother, Underground Assault, and then the chain quest from this one is the Defiance Brotherhood. I don't recommend going through the effort to unlock certain chain quests if you're ahead of the pack and can obviously go and complete quests without that much competition. And then you've also got the Unsent Letter that drops from the last boss of Dead Mines, which will later chain into a quest for Stockade, so make sure to do that. Wailing Caverns you can do on the Horde, round about level 18 to 25. You need to be level 15 to obtain all of the quests. You can also do this on Alliance, but you know, it is a bit of a detour and I don't really recommend it if you've got Night Elves who've already got the Flight Paths unlocked who can go and summon you. But you've got Deviant Hides, Trouble at the Docks, Deviant Eradication, and then Serpent Bloom, although that's Horde specific, and then Raptor Horns, the Barren Oasis, that's Horde specific as well. And then you've got the Glowing Shard that drops from the last boss. To unlock the last boss, remember to go back to the entrance of Wailing Caverns and speak to the NPC there. 
and then you have to do this escort. You can do stockades around level 23 to level 30, you have to be level 22 to unlock all of the quests, and this is obviously alliance only. You've got Quell the Uprising, What Comes Around, The Fury Runs Deep, The Color of Blood, Crime and Punishment, and then obviously the chain that involves the unsent letter. You can also do BFD if you want to change the scenery, you don't want to grind the same dungeon over and over again. You can do this around about level 24 to 32. You need to be level 20 to unlock all of the Alliance quests, 21 for the Horde quests. But again, I don't recommend Alliance to do this dungeon if you've got Night Elves who can summon you, or obviously Draenei as well. So, for Alliance you've got Knowledge in the Deeps, In Search of Feldred and Twilight Falls, so that's actually quite some decent quest for the Alliance. You've also got the Corrupted Blood, that is a chain though. Horde have another two quests too, but they're both chains, Allegiance to the Old Gods and the Essence of Akume. Then inside the dungeon you can pick up the Black Fathom Villainy, both Alliance and Horde can pick up that quest, and then the Horde can also pick up Baron Aquinas. Now at this point, most people like to run into Scarlet Monastery at level 30, but I don't think it's the best play to be honest. I mean, you can do that if you want, but I definitely think it's worth doing a Gnomagon quest run at least and it's actually a good dungeon to grind all the way up until level 34. And not many people know this, but the Horde can actually teleport there with a very simple quest that you pick up in Orgrimmar. So inside the dungeon, both Alliance and Horde can get these quests. You've got a Fine Mess, the Spackle Matic 5200, and the Grime Encrusted Ring. Then the Alliance have Save Technox Brain, the... I'm not I'm going to even attempt to pronounce that one. Grural Dematic Exacuvators? Evacuous, oh my god, whatever that means. Anyway, Essential Artifacts, Data Rescue, and the Grand Betrayal. Then Horde have Rig Wars, and then you have the quest Chief Engineer Scooty. This is basically the quest that unlocks the teleporter at Booty Bay. Now, for Scarlet Monastery, both Horde and the Alliance can obviously do Scarlet Monastery. It's a bit of a trek for the Alliance to get to, but it normally is worth the trek. You can grind this level 30 all the way until level 44. You need to be level 34 to unlock all the quests for the Alliance, and then 33 for the Horde. Alliance have Mythology of the Titans and In the Name of the Light. The Horde have Voril's Revenge, Compendium of Fallen, Hearts of Zeal, and Into the Scarlet Monastery. Then there's two extra chain quests for the Horde. You've got Test of Faith and Go and Go and Goano. And then obviously there's obviously the mage quest called Hidden Secrets. Zulfarak, you can do this at level 44 all the way up until level 49. You need to be level 40 to unlock all of the quests. You've got Troll Temper, Scarab Shells, Tiara of the Deep, Divano, Matic Rod, and Gazrilla. You've also got two chains that you can do, so the Prophecy of Masharu and Witherback Cages, that's Alliance only though. And then the Horde also have Venom Bottles. Now, at level 49 you can start grinding BRD, although it does take you a while to unlock all of the quests. You have to be level 55 to be able to obtain all of the quests, but you can do this recommend up until level 56. So you've got Ribley, Screws, Spigot, Heart of the Mountain, Achievement of the Core, then Alliance have the Good Stuff and Hurley Black Breath, Horde have Kill on Sight, Dark Iron Dwarves, The Last Element, and Thunder Brew Recipe. And now we've got a lot, and I mean a lot of chain quests, so you've got Dark Iron Legacy, Divine Retribution, Overmaster, Pyrom, that's Alliance only, Smoldering Runes of Ferocian, Alliance only, Karen Might Hammer, that's Alliance only, Dishonored of the Flame, these are the Horde ones now, so Dishonored of the Flame, you've got two quests for that. Commander Gorshak, Kill on Sight, Iron Dwarves, which eventually unlocks Grak Lockherb, and then eventually leads into Operation Death to Angerforge. But inside the dungeon you got Love Potion, but you probably won't want to bother doing that. At level 56 I'd recommend going into Low Blackrock Spire, Strathform, or Scholomance, definitely for the quests. And then, honestly, you can pick any three of those dungeons that you prefer to grind the most. Most people say Little Platter Expire is the best one to grind because it's just bigger. But I recommend doing at least each and every one of them for the quest. So you've got Eeny Teasy Y, Kibler's Exotic Pets, Putter Down, that's Alliance Only, then the Pack Mistress, and the Warlord's Command, and that one's Horde as well. And you've got the Chain Screech of Spirits, definitely recommend doing that because it does chain into a number of dungeons along the way. And you can also do Baijo's Belongings for the Alliance and Operation Baijo for the Horde. And inside of the dungeon you've got General Drakarash's Command, Seal of Ascension and Baiju's of Belongings for the Alliance. Another thing you can do, if you want to go and get your Sunken Temple items, which are very useful, you can go and do your Sunken Temple quest as well, and what other quests you can pick up from Sunken Temple. Remember to use Atlas Loot to find out that out. I definitely recommend at least doing a Strathorm quest run. There's a ridiculous amount of quests in Strathorm. You get easily, like, close to 200,000 XP just from the quest in Strat. 
And same goes for Skullamons, at least do Skullamons once for all of the quests. And then you can grind classic dungeons all the way until level 60 if you want, or you can go to Ramparts early. Obviously you can start Ramparts at level 58. I'd also recommend doing a little questing in Outland because the gear that you get from Outland quests will dramatically buff your character because the quest loot is so much better. So first of all, you've also got Weak in the Ramparts, you're going to get that from Gunny or Stoneguard at Stockton, depending on whether you're Horde or Alliance. And the Alliance Chains begins with the Legion Reborn, and the Horde one begins with Through the Dark Portal. And then inside Ramparts, you've obviously got the Dark Tidings quest that drops from the Omnius Letter from the last boss, which will chain into a quest that you will do in Blood Furnace. And honestly, I'd recommend grinding Blood Furnace up until level 61 until you can do Slave Pens. There's only one quest you can do with Slave Pens, and it requires you to go into Underbog as well, so I recommend doing that, especially as you can just turn it in straight outside the instance. We do slave pens 61 to 65 and do mana tombs for 65 to 66. You can stay longer if you care about getting certain gear pieces, but you mainly there for a couple of quests that you can get in there which are really nice. Safety is a job done and someone else's hard work pays off. Then the second you are level 66, do Sefer Calls up until level 68. And then you will unlock Shadow Labyrinth quests. I definitely recommend doing a quest run of all of the level 68 to 70 dungeons. So, you know, you've got Shadow Labyrinth, Steam Vaults, and also Shattered Halls. You can probably skip Steam Vaults, though, if you don't really want to do it. You know, don't want to go down swimming in that pipe again, which is really annoying and getting killed by piranhas. But Shattered Halls has two good quests as well. You know, Turning the Tide of a Will of a War Chief. And then you've got Pride of the Fell Horde, which is also an Alliance or Horde quest. And then, honestly, you know... I'd finish off my grinding in Shattered Halls, there's a really good mob density in Shattered Halls, it's probably the best thing to grind all the way until level 70. But, a little bit of a bonus tip guys, you may as well do start doing some Magister's Terrace, because Magister's Terrace provides really really good loot. And to be honest, since you are so buffed in Wrath of the Lich King, if you get some good gear, you may as well just start doing Heroics for gear. Although Heroic Magister's Terrace might be a little bit too difficult, so stick to the other instances on Heroic Mode. Anyway guys, that's where I'm going to end the video there. Remember to subscribe and check out my channel sub trailer if you want access to those really good weapon progression guides for fresh servers. Anyway, my name is Goblin. to my next video. Ciao.